sometimes sleep in petrol stations and parking garages. And sometimes we see very um, entertaining things happening all around us. And this is another great example of the wonders of traveling in Peru. And welcome to Peru. Slight um, situation there with, with the cow. And we are going down, 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 and it's hot, hot, hot. Are you ready to join us as we play Indiana Jones in the mountains of Peru? Yeah. You ready for the mountains, honey? I don't know. I'm ready for Indiana. So let's take you along on a great adventure through the mountains of Peru. Our plan was to head south, following some of the rivers through the mountains, heading for our first stop, the archaeological site of Quelap. After that, heading down the B8, a notorious route through the mountains to Cajamarca. We had a great adventure ahead of us, and we were ready to go. The landscapes were fantastic. Let's go. It's been nearly impossible to reach Quelap until recently, but now South America's longest, highest and newest cable car has been built and that has made it possible for more tourists to head there. So you feel like Indiana Jones? Jane Jones, <laughs> woo! <laughs> this is a fast table And we are off to explore our first ruins off the beaten track and try and feel like Indiana Jones in the Temple of Doom. We are in the Quell, Quella Teleferico or Telecabina, as they call it here. And this one is a lot quicker than the one in um, Colombia. <laughs> yes. <Woo! laughs> and a lot higher. Oh my word. Oof, what a drop. We are going down, 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 and then we have to go up, up, up. And it's moving pretty fast. And the windows are clean, so the view is much better before all the people touch the, the, the windows and make them all, all um, oily. How did the people get up here? So yes, our first question is, how did the pre-Inca people that built this place, I think it was 580, get up there? With the hiking truck. Yeah, tell them about the hiking trail. There's the hiking trail, the steep hiking trail. And um, they say you can walk up, but it's quite strenuous and only very fit people should do it. And it can be very muddy. Oh, here's the trail below us if you want to have a look at what the actual trail is like. But we decided to take the easy way out and um, take the telecabinas. Telecabanas, I think it's called, yeah. But yeah, it's a good drop. Very difficult to judge 
How are you all? But it's, it's a few hundred meters down. Okay, get it, get it. Yeah, this way. Oh. There's a bridge. Yeah. Oh, Over there is a bridge. Uh, and a little waterfall. Nice to swim. Mm. Fantastic landscapes of blue again. Climbing up is a little bit slower than getting down. So that was just uh, the, the first up. We are still going higher and higher. There was a very informative and small museum at the top of the cable car, which told us the history of Quilap and how it was discovered. Quilap is actually much older than Machu Picchu and of much higher archaeological value. Okay, you ready to take on the last 500 meters? Yeah, this one is out. So the Incas and the local guys that built this place didn't think of putting ramps up, so I'm going to hand over to Karina and she will continue up the mountain, sucking thin air. Yeah, voraciously. <laughs> voraciously. <laughs> okay, so I am here at the ruins. In the background you can see the walls of the city that they constructed. So on top of that, there's supposed to be hats that look like that. Um, this is the most complicated reservation system that we've ever come across. To, um, you can take the cable car up, up, but before the time you have to make a reservation to actually do a group tour. Um, as you can see, people are still working. So I've got a reservation for two o'clock. Resting a bit after the the uphill walk and appreciating the views so to show you what I'm looking at. Um, so I think this is a replica of what the houses look like. Quite big. Um, you have a fireplace here in the corner and then here they have some bones in the skull. Um, a few coins for good luck. Um, and I think they put their vegetables and stuff here. There's some skins. And then here, the guinea pigs. Oh, well, fake ones. Yeah, supper. Yeah, so the houses are quite high for Peruvian people, I must say. Um, Normally it's quite low and the doors are quite low. So. So quite a narrow entrance and I assume these are all the huts. Oof. Cell phone reception is good here.
pueblo de la roca. Quite a lot of houses here. And I must say it's actually very quiet and peaceful up here. Nice. And look over the village. Muy tranquilo. And there's some attention to detail at the bottom. So it looks like they first built the foundation here. And then out to stoop. Say because it's there's a bit of an overhang, and then you could level your house. There's little steps, so this is how they built all the, the houses. Um, looks like we, we are only allowed to walk on the platforms. We've got the hard hat, and then some of the houses are bigger than the other ones, so this one's a bigger um, and I don't know if you can see the decorative part at the bottom. I didn't expect it to be so peaceful here. Um, from what I could understand from my broken English or uh, broken Spanish is that they only recently reopened the place. So that's why it's a bit uh, complicated to make the reservations. And you also can't walk around freely everywhere. You are being watched like a hawk. Um, I had a bit of a Walls of Jericho feeling. Um, yeah. Ancient civilizations. What do we know and what don't we know? And then it was time to take the cable car down and head off to our next fascinating archaeological site. This one was quite a drive and quite a surprise. The sarcophagi of Karaji hidden quite deep into the mountains. It was quite a drive, but well Today, worth it. another hop, skip and a jump. We are at the Sophagasus of, and I can't remember the name, but they are over there. It is just quite amazing how many, how many archeological sites there are. And you just wonder how many there are still here that people don't know of. These, they are, it's six figures in the mountains over there. Uh, I want me to zoom in for you, but on the left hand side there's some caves. It looks like clay caves that was closed. Then we've got the six guys. It looks like six or seven of them. And then there's one over there in the cave just on the right hand side of it as well. Um, which is quite a walk. Well, it was quite a drive because we um, kind of thought, thank you Google Maps, one hour. But then it took us um, about three hours to drive and then another one kilometer brisk law walk that Louis couldn't complete. I'm um, just gonna give you an idea of what it looks like here. There's it's agricultural lands all over and then some pine forests. Okay, they're building a little lapa here and then uh, maybe I should do it from another side. like these you just better not get something coming from the front especially the big uh, trucks because it's very very narrow but you've got a brilliant view Exactly what we were talking about, 
nobody wants to go on the outside and luckily it's our inside it's we are on the inside in this instance oh, oh is there somebody behind you be a single lane road but is used as a double lane. It's being maintained by hand as it's too narrow for any machinery and everywhere there's warnings about the dangers of this road. Luckily we only got stuck behind the truck once which didn't delay us too much because it is extremely difficult to pass. We quickly learned that you have to hoop around every blind corner to warn the cars that you are coming from the front so that you don't run into anybody on the narrow road. And we've made it to the bottom. It's been a long slog, eh, honey? Yeah. Focused driving, eh? Yes. So many mountains to cross. Yeah. And welcome back on the road as we are heading south, back into the mountains. The White Mountains are approaching, driving through small rural Peruvian villages, lots of twists and turns in the road, getting up, climbing up and dropping down again. We're averaging about 2,600, 2,700 meters at the moment and we're going to try and stay at that altitude or higher so that we don't have to get used to the altitude again. We have a brilliant few days of driving and hopefully Corinne can do some exciting hikes. Yes. <laughs> we both picked up a bit of a flu. We suspect it was in the cable car um, on the way up to Quelap where Corinne shared the, 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 the cable car with two guys. Um, but both of us has a bit of a flu and we hope to really recover recovered before she has to start the hikes. But we have a few exciting days ahead of us. Very little traffic on the road. Still quite a good quality road. It, it varies. Double lanes. Yeah, it's at, least, at least it's, it's wide enough for two cars. Uh, not like the uh, Don't Look Down Road. Home our last um, mountain crossing. Our landscape is getting drier and drier, especially when we climb up and when we drop down, it gets greener and greener in the, in the valleys where there's a little bit of a river. The affinity for fireworks and lots and lots of noise was again very noticeable as soon as we entered into Peru and especially into the small towns where we ran into many many different festivals of many many different kinds celebrating a virgin of some kind or another. We did not always understand the reasons behind the festivals but we did find it fascinating to watch. 
we could really appreciate the pride displayed in the Inca heritage, something that's very noticeable in Peru and Bolivia, but quite lacking in other South American countries. Also, the use of traditional methods of farming and transport were very, very noticeable. Let's twist and turn. At the turn, it's very, very dusty and very loose. Fine powdery <laughs> dust and it shake, rattle and roll. You get a little bit of tar when it's straight and as soon as there's a turn, it's washed away and dusty. And we are sneezing and coughing. Linked to our cold, this is not <laughs> ideal um, driving conditions. And then every now and then we get a nice straight patch of tour. Oh. There's a party, so I can come. Take the money to you. Take the money to you, so I'll show up. We were again astounded by the craftsmanship displayed on all the plazas or town centers of the most amazing work being done with the trees and plants. And everywhere on the streets we could still see the ladies in the big hats doing traditional weaving in the old, old methods like it used to be done for the last thousands of years. And it's a fresh, cool morning next to the side of the road. We found this wild camp right next to the road and had a brilliant night's sleep at 3,900 meters. It was getting uh, clear. We were climbing up a little bit and we decided to rather stop because the higher you go, the colder the nights get. And this morning we woke up to a brilliant view and far, far in the distance we have seen the first peaks of snow-capped mountains of the Cordela Blanca or the, the White Mountains. So today we hope to get a little bit closer as we explore the mountains of Peru. We're really loving the drives, it's very slow going. Lots and lots of twists and turns, but it's a refreshing view. In our next episode, we continue exploring the small towns of northern Peru and drive into many, many festivals and even get stuck in a town full of festivities. And then we continue climbing up into the mountains of the Cordillero Blanco and see how our van can handle the twists and turns of the many, many interesting roads. But that's a story for another time. So please remember to like, subscribe and hit that bell icon so you won't miss out on future adventures. Thank you for our Patreons for making these videos possible.